Hello, welcome to the Claw Studio here at the Royal Opera House. John Copley began his career in this building as a 16-year-old. He's 82 this year, you can work out the mathematics. Uh, he's staged 39 operas for the Royal Opera, 16 original productions, including La Boheme, which finally, after 41 years in the repertoire, gets its final outing this season. John has returned to direct the revival. Let's talk about Bohem. It goes right back to your early days, because I think you were 11 when you first saw it on stage. 11 or 12, um, I saw the Sadler's Wells Opera Company do it. I was a schoolboy in Birmingham, and I went to the Doily Cart. I'd seen the G&S operas, but this was the first proper opera I'd seen when I was 11 or 12. And I cried all the way home on the bus. I do remember that. I was incredibly impressed. And the next day I went and bought a, uh, got a score from the library and I started playing it on the piano. And after about four weeks I could play the whole thing. And it's been with me ever since. Uh, John Tooley said when he first asked you to do this, we want a traditional production, something that'll do a season or two. Yes. <laughs> I think five seasons, he said. We'd like it to last five seasons. So um, that's what one did. One did a traditional um, production with a, a wonderful designer called Julia trevelyan Oman, whose work I had admired very much. And I thought she would be good, and she, she was. She was a perfectionist. She was, and the only problem with her was that she could only do um, things with reference. She would not do anything without the reference, um, which is fine. I mean, we all do that. We need our reference from the libraries and, and whatever. But we were having trouble with the billiard room in the Café Montmuse. When I was a student in Paris in my very early days, there was a South Bank cafe I used to go to which had billiards on the first, well, the mezzanine floor. And I wanted to do this in my production. We couldn't find a reference for it anywhere. And she was really quite adamant. If there was no reference, we couldn't do it. <laughs> <clears throat> and then after days and days or weeks at the v &A, thank God we found the Café au Billiard. And so it was OK. She also was a, a stickler for the sewing. Um, all of the, the, the collars and all of the things needed to be hand-sewn. And I said to her one day, we were on a budget. One of the reasons I did a lot of productions here, I was always under or in budget. I never went over budget. And I said to her one day, it's so expensive having all this hand-sewing. And she said, yes, but you see, John, one day it might be filmed. <laughs> and I said, you must be crazy. They ever filmed this. Of course, we filmed it about four or five times. And the close-ups, you see all these blouses and the chorus, and they were all hand-stitched, taking hours and hours. She was quite right, of course. What was your thinking then behind Bohem when you did it for, for the first time? That sense of kind of reality, I guess, of, of, of you have to believe in, in the four men's lives, don't you? Well, I wanted, I wanted, first of all, whenever I'd seen Bohem, I'd never really understood why those four men live together. And the first thing I said to Julia was, I do want us to feel that each of the men has their own place in the set, where they sleep. And Marcello in this production has his sofa up on the top where the nude model sits eventually. Rodolfo has his table and bed. Chouinard has his piano and a folding bed on the top platform. And there's a little room off here where Colina indicates on his first entrance because he throws all his stuff in there and it's a silly little thing but it made a great difference to me so you had thomas allen in that first cast yeah. uh, domingo was the first rodolfo. domingo was the first rodolfo peter glossop was marcello Gwyn Howell was colline and ricciarelli was uh, mimi and wendy fine was musetta it's like yesterday and and the list of names over the years, I mean, Pavarotti, Carita Canua, Carreras, Freni, then moving on to, to more recent times, um, Giorgio Roberto Alagna, Rolando Villazon. They've all been in it and done it, um, mostly with success. I've had one or two awkward moments. 
but my lips are sealed. <laughs> <laughs> and now you're back directing the, the revival of it. Um, what's it like re returning to it? I mean, obviously you've done some of the other revivals, not, not all of them, but, but coming back to it each time. Well, I've got, um, I've got Anna Nitrebka, who I've never worked with before, but I've admired for many years. I'm thrilled to bits she's doing Mimi. And I've got Joseph Kalea, who I absolutely love working with. He's a wonderful singer. Good luck over the next, over the next few weeks. Um, it's going to be quite an event, the, the, the final season, isn't it? Thank you so much for being here. You've been absolutely marvellous. Well, ladies really, and gentlemen, really, really. John Coughlin. Thank you.